Hey, what's your favorite scary movie? <laughs> I'm just playing with y'all. It's just me. <laughs> you probably would have preferred if it was Scream Face. It, pff, what the freak did I just say? <laughs> probably would have preferred it if it was Ghost Face, but instead of me, but you know. It's me. It's my YouTube channel. It's not Ghost Faces. There isn't two of me that's trying to kill multiple people. But, you know, we're here to uh, talk about what I watched and bought in September. So, let's just go ahead and get started with what I watched in September. So, just for the hell of it, I'm just going to include rewatches, because why not? There was quite a bit that I watched this month, so yeah. Let's just go ahead and get right to the chase. So... First things first, on the 1st of September, I ended up watching Alice Darling, which is a new A24 movie, I do believe. Um, and it was it was pretty solid, I gotta say. Um, my, my score has gone down for it since I watched it, but, you know, it was it was pretty decent, honestly. Um, there wasn't anything to really, like, write home about, um, but I liked it enough. Uh, B minus. B minus. Yeah. Then I rewatched The Flash that same night. Um, actually, no, I rewatched it that morning. So, yeah, this movie I still actually really love. Um, I watched it initially when it came out in the theaters, and um, I really loved. I I loved it then, um, and I love it after two rewatches. We'll, we'll get to the second rewatch. Um, I'm gonna give this one an A minus. Still an A minus, actually. Yeah. Uh, then I rewatched the first two Equalizer movies. The first one, um, we'll talk about that first. So, the first one, I mm. actually really, really enjoy. Sorry, I, I apologize for burping there, but um, yeah, I, I really enjoy this first Equalizer movie. I genuinely think it's a great action movie. Um, really fun, you know, Denzel Washington action thriller. Um, pretty violent. All all three of the Equalizer movies are pretty violent, but yeah. Uh, rewatched that one, and then also rewatched Equalizer two. Um, as for the grade for the the first one, that one's like a solid B plus for me. Um, it's a little long, and I will say that, but uh, yeah, I I really enjoy the first Equalizer. But yeah, the second one. Uh, when I first watched it, I had a lot of issues with it. Uh, mainly because I couldn't really keep track of what was going on because the way I watched it, I watched it through Hulu. And I don't know if this is just the movie in general. It doesn't have subtitles, but for whatever reason, there was a lot of foreign foreign language speaking, and there was zero subtitles in Equalizer 2 on Hulu. Uh, I haven't watched any other version of Equalizer 2, but um, yeah, um, I don't I don't know if there's any subtitles on any version of it, so. Yeah, um, Equalizer 2 gets a B for me because I, I really enjoy the action sequences in this one, specifically the third act. The entirety of the third act was actually freaking awesome. I, I, I love that whole action sequence in Massachusetts, wherever that was. Um, yeah, Equalizer 2 gets a B. Equalizer 3, I went to go see this one in the theater. And my thoughts have gotten a little bit worse over time, um, mainly because I feel like the movie was a little bit too short. Um, but yeah, I, I really enjoyed Equalizer 3. Uh, maybe the villain is probably like the weakest of the three, really thinking about it, because, you know, as you go on with these movies, the, the villains kind of get like progressively weaker for whatever reason. Um, so the first one is like, he's fighting a Russian mob. The second one, he's going against, like, ex-CIA members. And then the third one, he's going against a, a biker gang. <laughs> going against a biker gang. <laughs> um, but, yeah, um, I, I really like the third movie. Um, I, I think it actually wraps up pretty nicely the uh, story of the character of, oh, what was it, John something. No, Robert McCall. Why was I thinking John? Robert McCall uh, wraps up that character pretty nicely. He puts a little bow on the top of it. Um, finding peace, you know, of course, in, in his new town in Italy that he figures out is there. Um, 
I'm going to give it a B, though, because, you know, like I said, uh, villains are a little weak, or the villain is a little bit weak, and um, it, it goes on a little bit too short, I'd say. Honestly, it doesn't feel like... It, it, I mean, it, it feels like it should be way longer. Um, but yeah, I, I enjoyed Equalizer 3 a lot. And, you know, the whole trilogy is actually pretty darn good uh, for an action trilogy. Wouldn't mind seeing a fourth one, even though they ended Robert's character uh, pretty nicely. Um, but yeah, I liked Equalizer 3 quite a bit. It was a fun action movie. And then on the second I watched... What was this one? Five movies in one day. So, first I rewatched Forgetting Sarah Marshall, which is actually growing to be one of my favorite comedies. I think I've seen it a solid three times, maybe only like two all the way through. Um, but yeah, I, I I genuinely love Forgetting Sarah Marshall. Um, it's a it's it's a great comedy. Um, one of the movies that I probably laugh at the most and. Uh, on this most recent rewatch, I noticed a lot of darker jokes that I just guess I missed out on the first couple times I watched it, but, like, holy crap, there are some really, really dirty, dark jokes. Uh, but yeah, I, I thoroughly enjoy, um, Forgetting Sarah Marshall. That one gets an A- minus for me. And then I watched Unforgiven, the Clint Eastwood movie. Um... Yeah, it was it was good. Um, I, I I think it was a little overhyped. I think there's a lot of really well written like moral ambiguity in the movie, and that's what I really love about it. So I really respect about it is the writing. Um, Clint Eastwood gives a really good performance. The whole cast is actually pretty darn good. Um, but yeah, I didn't love the movie like a lot of people do. Uh, it was really solid though. That one gets a B plus for me. And then I showed a friend, John Wick, for the very first time. And uh, I still love it. He loved it. So that was awesome. Yeah, A plus. John Wick. John Wick is going to be one of my favorite action movies and might honestly end up being my favorite of the entire series. And I watched it two times this month, or this past month. So, um, yeah, I, I love John Wick. That is easily the most rewatched movie in the series for me even though i love two and i love four four being my favorite as of right now one is my most rewatched um <clears throat> yeah i love john wick and then i rewatched the blair witch project uh showing the same friend that movie for the first time and ah oh man i really grew on this movie, I gotta say. Um, I, I used to really not like this movie, and uh, we'll even talk about it later because I ended up buying it. Uh, spoiler alert. <laughs> but, yeah, I, I genuinely really, really liked The Blair Witch Project after this rewatch. So that one gets a B plus. I think there's some dull spots, but, you know, for a, like an 80-minute long found footage movie, it's pretty darn solid. B plus, and then I rewatched the Nightmare Before Christmas because you know, kicking off spooky season, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta rewatch at least two classics <laughs> like the very first day. So I watched Blair Witch Project, and then I watched Nightmare Before Christmas. It's it's due for another rewatch already, so I can tell you that if I watched it at the beginning of last month, you you bet your bottoms that I'm going to be rewatching this one uh, before the end of this month. So. Yeah, uh, I love Nightmare Before Christmas. It's an A plus for me because it's it's just a classic. Um, I, I love it. Sorry if that shook a little bit, but I'm I'm using my phone as a um, sc scrolling through my letterbox diary. So yeah. Um, then I watched First Reformed, which I actually started watching in August but didn't finish until September. So this is on the fifth, um, and I actually really I really like this one. Um, basically it's a, the story of a priest who over the course of about a year has really kind of lost his faith and it's like recapping the story of like the past year or whatever. Um, so he's trying to help some dude like keep away from suicidal thoughts 
uh, stuff like that. It's 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 a good one. Um, definitely re- recommend it if you haven't seen it before. It's an A24 flick. It's on Max if you ever want to check it out. Um, that one gets an A for me. I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed that movie. Um, very deep and emotional movie. So, yeah. I watched a little short on YouTube called Dylan's New Nightmare. Now, if you don't know what this movie is, basically, this is a reboot, sort of, of, you know, I, I think it was made by, like, one of those bigger, you know, like, horror short film YouTube channel companies on, you know, YouTube, of course. I don't remember which one exactly it was, but this is, like, a continuation from New Nightmare, and it's following the character of Dylan. He brought back the same actor. He was the, the little boy in that movie, and I I liked it. The ending, though, it, I don't know how I felt about the ending, because it, it had Freddy come back, he kills somebody, and then it just ends on Dylan on the phone with Heather Langenkamp and the movie and the short ends. So I don't know if they're trying to do a part two or something like that, but um I wasn't crazy on this one. Um C plus. I mean even though it's just a short film, it's like thirty minutes long, but you know, I thought that for the most part the movie held it together though because it had some pretty cool visual effects and makeup and pretty gnarly kills, I gotta say it, but um you know, just like the last five minutes of the, the short kind of just like fell apart. Um, but yeah, I liked it. Then I watched Juice, the uh, Tupac Shakur movie. Now, to be clear, I had no clue. I mean, I knew that Tupac was in this movie, but I thought honestly, like in the first half of it, that he would be a bigger role because he was really just like a, a little bit of a side character and I had no clue who he even played. And then he takes a, a big jump in, like, the second half of the movie where he's the big, like, villain of the movie. Um, and let me just say, Tupac is actually, like, unforgettable in this movie. I thought he gave a pretty chilling performance. Um, but yeah, it, 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 was, it was pretty solid. I liked it. Um, I'll give that one a B. And then I watched the new Brandon Cronenberg movie. I believe it's Brandon Cronenberg. Yeah, pretty sure. Um, Infinity Pool. It came on Hulu, I think, two months ago now, or something like that. Um, I was kind of mixed on it. I think the initial setup is pretty cool, but um, outside of the initial setup, um, I wasn't crazy. I wasn't, I wasn't crazy on it, gotta say. Um... Yeah, it was it was pretty okay. I'll give that one a C plus. It gets a little worse for me as time goes on, and I just keep sitting on it. But you know, it's fine. Uh, Man of Steel. Watched this one the same day as Infinity Pool. And man, I I love Man of Steel. I rewatched it. You know, I've I've seen this movie like four times at this point. I love Man of Steel so much. Uh, It's genuinely just one of my favorite superhero movies of all time. I feel like where people don't love it because it really, like, matures the character of Superman and they don't want that in their Superman, I think it actually vastly improves because they make Superman an actual human and not just this indestructible dude that flies around in a cape. Like... That's why I've never been crazy about Superman up until I watched this movie and Zack Snyder really landed his character for me. No pun intended. Uh, But they really ground the character of Superman. They tell his backstory, which I think is actually really, really incredible, the way that they told it in this adaptation of Superman. Genuinely one of the most underrated movies of all time. I will take no arguments. People hate this movie for some reason. And I don't get why. Um, Maybe the third act is a little bit just like slam bang and doesn't need to be there particularly, but I don't care. This movie's freaking awesome. A+. Um, No more needs to be said. I I love Man of Steel. 
Then I watched the next day, so the 10th, I watched the second of the animated Mortal Kombat movies, the Mortal Kombat Legends, uh, Battle of the Realms. Now, I was looking forward to this one because I kind of heard it's like the story of Mortal Kombat 2, the original Mortal Kombat 2. Uh, and I, I dug it. It was actually pretty solid. And this is the one that a lot of people are saying is like the worst of the three. And it's like, I don't know. This is like, I mean, easily the second best. We'll talk about the other one soon. But, uh, you know, it was honestly pretty fun. I, I dug it. Um, There's some pretty funny dialogue in it. Um, really surprising character deaths, honestly. I did not expect some of the, the turns. And I, I, God, Scorpion is one of my favorite, like, video game characters of all time. So the the use of him in this was actually really, really fun. The tournament was pretty cool. Uh, but I feel like, you know, some people say they try to put too much into the movie. And I do kind of agree for a movie that's only 80 minutes long, or not even 80 minutes long, they really pack a lot of stuff into this movie, and it doesn't help the movie, per se. Um, but yeah, I, I dug the movie. It was pretty darn good. That one gets a B for me. <sighs> and then I rewatched Stephen King's The Mist, the adaptation from Frank Darabont. I actually ended up watching this one twice, but I didn't log it twice, because I didn't... I don't, I don't think I finished watching it, the, the second rewatch. But, um, man, with this rewatch, it actually, like, really, really hit for me. I, I think I went from a two-star to a four-and-a-half star or something like that on Letterboxd. Holy crap, what a great, great horror movie. Uh, genuinely one of the most chilling endings I've ever seen in a, in a movie ever. And if I remember right from the articles and, like, interviews that I saw of Stephen King... Uh, surrounding this movie, I'm pretty sure he says that he wished that he wrote the ending of the movie in the book, which I did look up the ending of the book, and um, 100%, yeah, the, the movie has a way better ending, even though it's, like, the biggest gut punch ever, and it, it is, like, the most dividing part of the movie, for sure. Uh, maybe some dated CGI in there, but I gotta say... Watching the black and white cut, they improve on that CGI. Uh, that was the second time I watched the the second time I rewatched it was in black and white. Um, the first time it was just in normal color, so I had reference for how it looked in black and white. But Thomas Jane, man, Thomas Jane, he he can act in that movie. He could really act in that. Great, great movie. No one gets an A. I I love The Mist. Um, yeah. And then in English class, I end up watching Pay It Forward. Now, this is, you know, Kevin Spacey. <sighs> Kevin Spacey. Um, this is Kevin Spacey, Haley Joel Osment movie. <laughs> um, I'm not really sure how else to put it. It's got the two of them in it, and it's a, it's a drama about a kid who goes to social studies class, and the social studies teacher, played by Kevin Spacey, uh, tells them that by the end of the year, they should do something to change the world in some way. And this kid takes it very literally, and he goes and he finds three people, or tries to find three people, that he can help, and tells them to pay it forward, give it to three more people. So then this keeps going, and it gives it a lot of traction, like, it's news anchors and stuff from, like, all over the country. It's it's a good movie. It's very solid. Uh, it's not something I ever want to rewatch, though. Like, I don't know. The ending kind of came out of nowhere, and it just... I don't know. But this movie is also pretty funny as well. Here's one bit, and there's, like, a hospital thing. Um, if, you, if you've seen this movie, you probably know about the hospital scene. That had me dying in class. It had my whole class just laughing so hard um but yeah it was a solid movie that one gets a b all right mortal kombat legends snowblind this is the most recent of the mortal kombat legends animated movies um yeah i didn't like this one um th this was one that I heard it was actually kind of solid. 
this is the weakest of the three by far for me. Um, you know, I, I give the first two Bs. I mean, I love Mortal Kombat. They're, it, it, the whole franchise is just like a guilty pleasure. It, they're so stupid. They've got such a convoluted plot. But man, are they entertaining to play, watch. You know, it's just... Yeah, I, I love Mortal Kombat. The 2021 movie is probably my ultimate gu- guilty pleasure behind the Meg, which... Good God. <laughs> They're both pretty bad movies, but if you just look at it for a straight-up action movie in the in 2021 Mortal Kombat... That is like a 10 out of 10 action movie. That has got some insane action sequences. The opening sequence is freaking amazing. But we're not here to talk about 2021 Mortal Kombat, which is vastly superior to this one. Um, Yeah, this wasn't good. (laughs) I'm sorry. Um, Nah, didn't cut it. New character, I don't even remember his name. He was just boring. Um, The villains were stupid, had some awful freaking dialogue i think the quote i put in my review uh let's go before king kano throws a fit yeah i actually wanted to like punch my eardrums i I want to pull my eardrums out listening to that good lord um it's got some really weird animation style too and didn't feel like mortal kombat like besides some of the action sequences it didn't feel like mortal kombat at all so, if I'm ever going to rewatch any of those, it's either going to be Battle of the Realms or Scorpion's Revenge. Sorry, C- minus for that one. Not great. Then, on the 15th, I ended up watching three movies, so it was a, it was a Friday. Um, ended up watching Joyride, the new Joyride. Um, I, I posted a live review of this one, like, live stream review for this one. Uh, so... Go check that one out if you want my full thoughts on it. But I love Joyride. Genuinely one of the funniest movies I've, I've ever seen. Uh, some of the most times I've laughed watching a movie. In the first 25 minutes alone, I tried holding back laughter because I was in the middle of class watching it on my phone. Um, but yeah, it was a freaking hilarious movie. Um, that one gets an A minus for me because I feel like the ending gets a little cliche per se, but it's not perfect by any means. It's it's still really good though. I I, I really love Joyride, so I'm probably gonna be rewatching that one soon because two reasons. I already have the digital copy. That's how I watched it, and second, I bought it. Spoiler alert again. Yeah, pff, forget it. A minus for Joyride. Then I rewatched Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas on a watch along stream after I had Taco Bell, which I had to get up like three times because that's what Taco Bell does to you. <laughs> uh, if you know, you know. Um, but yeah, Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas is, you know, genuinely one of the funniest movies I think I've ever seen. It's just, it's nuts. It goes balls out crazy. Um,. It's a drug trip, quite literally, because you're in the perspective of one of the craziest potheads ever. <laughs> um, but yeah, it makes me want to read the book, because I had a discussion with my uh, band director about this one, because for some reason he was playing White Rabbit in class, and I said, hey, that's Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas, and he says, oh, you've seen that one? Pfft, read the book. It's, it's great. <laughs> Oh, man. Um, yeah, I, I, I want to read that book really badly now. But, yeah. Um, no, this one, A for me. It keeps getting better every time I watch it, but I feel like it goes on a little bit too long. That's the only thing that's holding it back from, like, a 5 out of 5. Um, yeah. You want me to throw the toaster in the bathtub at the peak of White Rabbit? <laughs> no. Or halfway across the desert started seeing the bats like it's such a crazy movie man i love it ah, johnny depp what a talent i'm sorry you had to deal with freaking amber heard good god um then i rewatched i rewatched critters um <laughs> this is an interesting movie because on one hand it's not good it's not good in the slightest but is it fun yeah, it's, it's a lot of fun. Um, yeah, it, it it's not good. Like I said, it's it's just a lot of fun, though. Um, yeah, 
this like a B minus. It's it's a guilty pleasure for sure. Um, Elemental. This one was on Disney Plus. They just added it. I gotta be honest. I don't think I've ever been as bored as I was watching a freaking Disney Pixar movie. <laughs> Honestly. Um, like a C I don't know it wasn't it wasn't great and speaking of another movie that wasn't great that was on Disney plus because it just came out the Little Mermaid remake one of the most pointless movies I think I've ever seen uh we all know that Disney live action remakes are just made to make money this one this one didn't do great at the box office either so uh yeah, um, I re I, I watched it because you know, I actually really like The Little Mermaid, the original. Um, it's it, it's it's held near and dear to my heart because, um, yeah. personal reasons. This remake was one of the most dull, lifeless adaptations I've ever seen. Um, it, it's just a padded out two and a half hour long movie a version of. A classic, a classic animated movie. What was the point of it? Just so they could put Scuttlebutt in it? Kill me. C minus. Might go down. Uh, genuinely not good at all. Then I watched The Machine, a pretty, you know, mediocre movie again this year. Um,. Yeah, I wasn't crazy about this one. It was kind of funny. I like Burt Kreischer. He's a cool dude. Um, his sense of humor, it gets a little weird, though, because it was like, look, I ripped off my shirt. That's that's funny. That's the style of humor. It's like, I get why some people would find that funny, like, body humor. It's kind of funny, but, like, at the same time, he just ripped off his shirt that's supposed to be funny. Like, he's he's a he's got a dad bod. Ha 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 ha. Um, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> they dropped a C bomb in this one though, so that that was kind of interesting. C plus. It was it was alright. Uh and then the next day I ended up watching some two really freaking good thrillers. So the first one was Joel Schumacher's phone booth. Uh this one was on Hulu and it was expiring and I literally could not find any other easy way to watch it like i couldn't find a good deal on it for amazon or anything like that um so yeah i checked it out on hulu and i dug it a lot it was actually a very well done like self-contained 80 something minute thriller it's got a great in ending too it just like comes out of nowhere and it was great Kiefer sutherland is actually like kind of haunting in this one i'm not gonna lie I think outside of 24, he's played just villains in everything he's done. Uh, and it's kind of nuts. But yeah, I love Phone Booth. It was, it was great. Now it gets a B B+. Uh, mainly because it takes a little while to get started. And Colin Farrell's character right at the beginning is a little bit um, irritating. Let's just say that. <laughs> and I watched Joyride from 2001 with Paul Walker and Steve Zahn. Uh, if you don't know about this one... Again, I did the live review of it along with the 2023 Joyride. And I actually love this one, too. Uh, very, very good thriller. Uh, I think really the only issue is that they show the... They kind of show the killer, like, toward the end. And it's in, like, the, the worst way you could do it. He, like, has his voice, but he says a line, but it's definitely not... Um, I don't even remember the dude's name, but it was the dude who plays, um, the dude from Silence of the Lambs, not Anthony, Frick, what did I, why am I blanking on every name? It's not Hannibal Lecter, but it's the, the other bad dude that they're trying to catch. Uh, anyway, yeah, it's the same guy that plays him. I don't remember his name for whatever reason, though. Um, he has the, vo he plays the voice of, um, the villain <sighs> candy cane <laughs> that that voice is chilling gotta say that but uh yeah it was a really solid thriller um 
basically, you know, you got two dudes going cross country to pick up some chick that they're trying to impress from college. And um, they find out that their car has a radio that can talk to police and truck drivers. So they use it to prank a truck driver to come to a hotel. Uh, and they find out that the truck driver apparently killed somebody. And so then they find that the truck driver is trying to take it, like trying to kill them, following them across country. Uh, and it's it's a it's a it's a really solid thriller, honestly. I kind of want to rewatch it soon now. Uh, B plus for that one because you know it's got its issues, but you know I I really dug it. Then on the nineteenth, I ended up watching Hugo, the Martin Scorsese movie. And I loved it, honestly. It was a really, really great Scorsese film. Uh, it just really like represents Hollywood and such a or like film in general, and just a, such a cool way. Um, yeah, such really cool visuals as well, like the, the train crash sequence and like the in the dream. But that, that was really neat. Uh, really dug that one. Then I watched Kronos, the uh, Guillermo del Toro movie, I believe this was his directorial debut, this is a Mexican movie, um, I believe, it is, like, Spanish-speaking, um, for the most part, it's got Ron Perlman in it, and if I remember right from the special features that I saw on it, uh, Guillermo del Toro sat him down and said, will you be in this movie, and I says, and he says, I don't speak Spanish, and he says, I'll teach you, sit down, we'll eat, <laughs> So yeah, that that was that was kind of funny, and you know, of course, Ron Perlman and Guillermo del Toro have gone on to do plenty of other projects, like the Hellboy movies, uh, etc. Um, I believe he was also in the first Pacific Rim, which Guillermo did as well. Um, yeah, I actually really enjoyed Kronos for the most part. I thought the ending was kind of weird, and it took me a little bit to realize that oh, this is a vampire movie. Okay, that was that's kind of cool. Um, I I really liked it. So that one gets a B. And then after that, I decided to watch the rest of the Critters movies, but I only watched Critters 2 that night. So yeah, Critters 2, it's a, it's a little bit of a step down from the first movie, I will say. But it's still good. I dig it. Um, you know, the Critter Ball is, it's funny. The Critter Ball is funny. What can I say? It, <laughs> it was funny. Uh, it was it was neat, cool creature effects. Uh, it's a shame though that this one bombed at the box office though, because then we wouldn't have as great of effects with the rest of the movies, and then they went direct to video, and so on and so forth. So yeah, Critters Two gets a C plus for me. It was it was fun. The acting and dialogue is awful though. Um, yeah, then I rewatched Lemony Snicket's A Series of Unfortunate Events, and I actually kind of dig this one. If they continued on, did the rest of the books, I feel like it would be a pretty successful series of movies. I'm not going to lie. Um, but yeah, I, I enjoyed the movie. I used to really like the show, and I haven't watched it in a long time, so whenever the, the Netflix show aired... I, I definitely enjoyed that one, but yeah, um, the movie is, is, is pretty fun, so B- minus for that one. Oh boy, the next day, I watched the other, or the, the, the next two Critters movies. I didn't even go to rewatch um, Critters Attack, because, oh boy, <laughs> oh boy. But yeah, Critters 3, um, not great. Not, not great. They went direct to video after true after two, um. So like they 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 decided to improve the puppets a little bit so they could have like moving hands and such. And uh, it looks jarring whenever they move their hands. Uh, very weird. Um, the acting is awful. This is Leo DiCaprio's first performance and buddy I don't even know how he went from that to winning Oscars but you know <laughs> yeah I don't I don't even know 
Uh, this is a pretty awful movie, other than some pretty decent puppet work, I gotta say. Uh, yeah, um, that one gets like a D minus. <laughs> this is nice as I can put that movie. It's, it's it's pretty dreadful to sit through for 80 odd minutes. And then Critters 4. This movie's just wasted potential. I, at this point, these movies are just wasted potential. Critters 4, man. Barely a crite critter to see at all in this movie. There's barely anything. Like, there's two, I think, that you can see in the movie. The acting is terrible. The dialogue is awful. All of these movies are not well made, besides, you know, the critters themselves and boy they, they there's no critters in this one there's like next to nothing <laughs> compared to the last or actually no compared to one and two there's barely any critters at all <laughs> like i'm pretty sure I, I watched like a kill count the kill count for critters four or something like that uh shout out to kill count team obviously they're great um i think they said that there was like seven or something like that that was in this movie and that was it that was it. Seven. Seven critters. The the tiny little dudes. There were seven of them. Direct to video. Um they this had no budget, so yeah. Um this is this is an F. It's just laughable. It's it's laughable how bad it is. It's kind of boring, honestly. There's some like okay kills, but it gets confusing because like you have returning actors, but they don't play the same character at first and then all of a sudden there's like a twist in it where they have a like a line that refers back to another movie and it's like so are you that character and then you like you get to the credits and no it's not the same character like i don't it was dumb <laughs> f Ugh. terrible uh the next day i went to go to go to the theaters to go see a haunting in venice the latest uh, Her Hercule Poirot detective movie, the um, adaptation of the um, Agatha Christie movies or books. I mean, uh, they were movies in the like the seventies and eighties, and I think they only did like four or something like that. And they just rebooted them recently. Did some newer stories. Actually, no, I think this is the only new story that they hadn't done in a movie before. Uh, actually, I looked it up. This wasn't even, like, close to the book at all. Um, but it at least it had Hercule per Perot in it. It's hard to pronounce his name, man. It's, it's hard to pronounce his name. But, uh, yeah. It, it was actually pretty solid, I will say. Um, the middle, like, 40 minutes were kind of boring to me. Um, but, you know, other than that, I kind of dug it. It had a pretty neat little, uh, like, spooky season aesthetic to it, and I enjoyed that, because it takes place on Halloween. Um, but yeah, it was, it was pretty solid. I'd give it a B-. And then I ended up going home and found the Alien movies on a, um, marathon on FX or something like that. And so I rewatched, you know, the first two, went and did other things after that, obviously. So, yeah, um, the first one, it's it's great. I think I only caught, like, the last, you know, like, half hour of it on TV, but the last half hour is, like, one of the better parts of the movie. So, yeah, it's um, it's still great, obviously. You know, it's it's, it's Alien. It's, it's freaking fantastic. A-plus, obviously, for that one. And Aliens, another movie that actually rose for me quite a bit recently, uh, went from like a three-star movie to like a five-star movie in one of my most recent rewatches of it. Um, genuinely one of the, like, the best sci-fi action movies ever. Um, James Cameron, man, master of sequels. You know, Terminator 2, Aliens, and Avatar The Way of Water are all great movies, so... Uh, he's on a roll. If Avatar three is as good as those three movies that I just listed, then uh, we're we're on good terms, man. We're on good terms. Aliens is an A plus. 
then after that, I ended up watching No One Will Save You. Actually, I had started watching this one like a week prior, I believe. Or maybe it was like a couple days prior and then just um, finished it that day. I don't quite remember. Uh, but I enjoyed it. It was actually like was almost nothing, n almost no dialogue in this movie. Um, Caitlin Dever is great. It's just a kind of a shame that the third act kind of went downhill a little bit. Like, I don't know, it just kind of confused me for whatever reason. And then the next day, the 25th, my birthday, my 16th. So I, I've gotten plenty of wishes already. Thank you guys who have given me birthday wishes. I, I thank you a lot. Uh, I end up watching Scream 6. And, uh, yeah, Scream 6 is... It's a lot of fun. Obviously, you know, it's not as great as I initially watched it because there's issues that keep growing on me as I watch them. But the more I watch it, the more I give it merit, though, at the same time, because there's a lot of stuff that, like, is really good and I appreciate it for that. It's just kind of a shame that the third act kind of doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Still a B plus for me though. I, I thoroughly enjoy Scream Six, and then I rewatched The Expendables. It, yeah, it's it's a fun action movie. Um, I was planning on seeing Expend Four Bulls or Expendables Four in the theater, but then I heard it was pretty awful, so I didn't go see it. That was actually initially what I was wanting to watch like that weekend instead of Haunting in Venice, but. The reviews came out, and I was, I was like, yep, yeah, nope, mm -mm, Haunting in Venice, <laughs> I'm good, um, yeah, I, ugh. I don't even want to watch Expendables 4 now, but yeah, the, the first one is just a really, really solid action movie, I, I enjoy that one a lot, a lot of really great, like, effects went into that one, all, like, really great work, and it captures what the movies are supposed to be in this, like, avengers style thing of you know like classic action heroes that's what this is supposed to be and it works so a solid b for that one because there's some like eh, dialogue in it there's some pretty dull moments but you know still solid and then i watched the amityville horror uh, the the remake not the original yeah, I'm still not used to Ryan Reynolds being Jack Torrance, but um, not good. This wasn't very good, honestly. The, this one gets a C. I don't even know how to elaborate. I was kind of bored. Um, then I watched Wild Things on Hulu. Uh, as the name would suggest, it's pretty wild. It's pretty wild. Um, pretty crazy stuff happens. Um... Kevin Bacon was pretty cool in it. Um, Nev Campbell was also pretty darn good. Uh, yeah, I liked it. I dug it. Uh, that one gets like a, a B- minus for me. It, it wasn't great, but... Nah, it was pretty good. Um, and then I decided to finish off watching the... Ex the oof, not the Expendables. The Insidious movies. So, if you didn't know, I ended up watching the first three, I believe, two months ago? In July, I believe. Could be wrong on that, but uh, yeah, I, I watched The Last Key. It was fine, like at best. There was some pretty neat, you know, like subtext to it. Like the villain feeds off of like fear. Like I, I like how they use the, the villain to like feed off of fear and stuff like that like that was kind of unique for the insidious movies to have like the, the the goofy key guy feed off of fear in a like a specific way but other than that off, off of grief that's what it was not off of just fear it was off of grief but yeah other than that it was okay i mean it was pretty neat following um uh lynn shay Lin Shay's character, I'm blanking on her name for whatever reason. Again, blanking on names all the time. Uh, it was it was pretty decent, you know, nothing to write home on, but write on home about. But it was it was fine. I think it's a C. 
And then I rewatched The Flash again, like I said, you know, rewatched it twice. Uh, yeah, it's it's still really, really good, in my opinion. One of the most underrated movies to come out this year and one of the most underappreciated movies because it has bad CGI. Um, just because it has bad CGI doesn't make it a bad movie. I'm sorry. Um, yeah, I mean, the CGI is rough. Doesn't look very good. But it's still a good movie. A minus. As I said. And then... Oh, I think I might have skipped my rewatch of John Wick. I think I might have. Swear I reviewed this movie again, but, you know. Um, might not have. I don't know. I, I definitely did rewatch it, though. Uh, but yeah, that one is still you know, one of my favorite movies ever. Uh, one of my favorite action movies ever. <laughs> but yeah. And then, as I said, I finished off watching the, the Insidious movies with the most recent one. Insidious, the the red blah. <laughs> this movie was so boring. My god. Um, the, the movie's just fundamentally flawed for the fact that you're following the characters trying to solve a mystery that you already know and you've known for 10 years at this point. For people who've been following this franchise since the first movie, you've probably known about this whole mystery mystery that they're trying to solve in this movie for 10 years. And I've known about it for like three months at this point, so, <laughs> you know, same difference. At this point, I don't even care. I don't care that they're trying to solve this stupid mystery. I already know what the what the reason is that they don't remember a year of their life. And it's like, it's just stupid. It's just flat out stupid. The characters are all dumb. Ty Simpkins is actually, like, really irritating in this movie. Uh, his roommate is annoying. <laughs> I don't know. And then Patrick Wilson look, dude... Props to you for directing this one. You did not start out with a great script, I gotta say. The third act is okay, but it uses borrowed love from the first two movies in the third act of this one. There's a little bit of difference where, like, Ty, or Ty Simpkins, Dalton, gets possessed, and it's like, okay, that's kind of neat, but it just, like, flashes back to the ending of insidious 2 when patrick wilson goes full jack torrance and it's like yeah you're just using borrowed love at this point like i don't d plus that actually no d not d plus d terrible terrible not good <laughs> not not terrible not good at, at, at all in the slightest and then the next day i watched October Sky, which is a lot better than Insidious the Red Door, Insidious Chapter 5, whatever you want to call it. Um, Jake Gyllenhaal's, like, breakout performance, sort of. And it's all about his character in, I believe, the 1950s or 1960s, who becomes fascinated with rocket science and builds rockets with his friends. And it's basically the true story of how this rocket scientist became a worker at NASA. And I thought it was actually really fascinating. Uh, it was a really, really good movie. I think aside from like cheesy, weird romance that was just kind of like thrown in. Other than that, this is a great movie. Um, also, the Shermanators in this one from American Pie. Mm, that one gets an, an A for me just because of the Shermanator. <laughs> Oh man. Cobweb. Watched this one the same day as October Sky. And um yeah, this is this is gonna go down as the most underrated horror movie of the entire year. Um under er, underrated underwatched. Basically, my story behind this one, I watched a review for it, and I had never even heard of this movie. I was like, what in the world is this? And the dude in the review says it was really darn good up until, like, the third act. And I was like, okay, I'll, I'll check it out. Um, it didn't play in any of my theaters because the studio decided to bury the crap out of this movie for whatever reason. Um, so, yeah, didn't get to check this one out in the theaters, unfortunately. Really wanted to, but it didn't even play anywhere near me. Um, so I waited until it hit Blu-ray, bought it this month. We'll talk about it later. Yeah, I bought it 
and I checked it out, and man, what a good horror movie, man. So it's basically, my, one of my friends put it this, like, put it in perfect words. It's basically, what if Stephen King wrote Malignant, right? So you got this kid who's kind, who's kind of abused at home, and he starts hearing voices in his walls. And uh, he starts telling people, like, I hear these voices in his walls. He's telling his parents this, and the parents are telling him that it doesn't happen. But this voice is starting to tell him weird things and really, really messed up stuff. Like, you should kill your parents, like, because I'm your sister. Yeah, that was kind of like a, a little twist, like, halfway through the movie. So it's it's not entirely a spoiler, but, you know, because it's apparently his sister. And it's like, well, I need to get this this chick out of my walls and kill my parents because they're, they're crazy. Whew, and then it just keeps going crazier and crazier and crazier. And um, as my friend said, it kind of just turns into Malignant but by Stephen King. And the ending, yeah, it could have wrapped up a little bit better. But I still love I still love the movie. I genuinely loved Cobweb. This one gets an A- minus for me. Great, great horror movie. And then I went to the theaters that Saturday, so the 30th the last day of September, I went, I went to go see The Creator, the new sci-fi epic movie from Gareth Edwards. Thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, I ended up watching two movies that day that used the same Radiohead song, by the way. <laughs> um, which I think is kind of funny, but yeah, uh, The Creator is awesome. Um, basically, to put it in simple terms, to try and sell it to you, it's basically a movie about guerrilla warfare between humans and AI. And I loved it. <laughs> I took that the guerrilla warfare strat that day and went to a laser tag arena and used it. <laughs> but yeah. Um, yeah, The Creator is great. Then I saw the Toxic Avenger, the original one, not the new one that premiered at Fantastic Fest, which I wish I could have seen in Fantastic Fest, but, you know, whatever. Um, I wish I went to Fantastic Fest so bad, man. I, that looks so fun, man. They got a pretty decent lineup as well. Um, but, yeah, Toxic Avenger, the original one, um, it's Troma, and if you don't know Troma, basically they're the most, like, crassed and violent studio like movie studio ever uh in this movie in the first 10 minutes there's a group of kids like teenagers that are driving their car around dropping slurs and then they go trying to run kids over in their car and there's like a bit in it like where they, they run over this kid and they go backwards and like his head bursts open under the freaking wheel and it's like oof i don't know about that the rest of the movie is pretty awful though like genuinely not good in the slightest um really bad acting like i get this what this th these studios are supposed to, like the studio is supposed to be it's not good it's not supposed to be good Whew. um not for me c minus i'm sorry and then the final thing i watched uh, in September was actually a pretty solid way to round out the month, and I watched Tom Cruise's Vanilla Sky. This isn't entirely for me. It's very dialogue-heavy, and I will say that. Um, but, man, um, weird movie, for sure. Uses the same um, Radiohead song that I was talking about from Creator. Uh, yeah. Uh, great movie. Er, really good movie, I will say. It's not like perfect like a lot of people say it is but I, I really enjoyed vanilla sky a lot this one gets a b for that for sure uh and with that let's go on uh, go ahead and get into what i bought this past month all right i'm gonna try and just rush through this one so basically the stuff that i bought before that i got before my birthday i'll start off with my um spirit halloween haul actually first thing I got an Oppenheimer poster. Pretty sick. But yeah, I went to Spirit Halloween for the very first time. I had never been inside of Spirit Halloween. I mean, yeah, I'd been inside of, like, Halloween stores before, but I had never been inside of Spirit Halloween. Spirit Halloween is just, like, a like a surreal experience going into a Spirit Halloween. It's great. 
and I really hope that some stores stay around like year round, like people are saying they're supposed to be. Um, but yeah, I got this pretty sick, um, like canvas painting of Michael Myers. Pretty sick. They had some pretty neat ones there. They had like a, a Freddy Krueger. And I believe there's a Jason, a Frankenstein, Bride of Frankenstein. Uh, and I think there was the Shining Twins. And I don't remember what else there was. But, yeah. <clears throat> and then, um, I went to a Walmart, actually, first. I, I went to a Walmart before that. And I bought five things from there. Pretty neat stuff. So, I mean, one of the bigger releases of the last month was Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. Had to pick this one up. Uh, it's just the Blu-ray, though, because, you know, I heard the 4K actually wasn't great. Like, the audio mix was not good in the slightest. And then I bought The Mist. I already talked about that one. We got Final Destination, the five-movie collection. I've actually been meaning to rewatch these movies. Uh, Jeepers Creepers 1 and 2. I owned the second one. I didn't own the first one, so now I have them in a condensed two-pack. Uh, and Critters, the four-movie collection. So uh, the last four are all like the seasonal like horror movie slipcovers. Um, the Mist is not one of the Warner Bros. movies, but... Um, what well, they like, usually Warner Bros and Universal always release like the glow in the dark slip covers with their stuff. Um, and usually I get like a couple every every year. So those are some of the newer ones that I noticed. I believe though that Jeepers Creepers and Final Destination have been there in the past, but I just never picked up those two. Uh, and I finally did because I, I really wanted to own the first Jeepers Creepers. Uh, and then Critters, I believe, is brand new to that that series. So yeah. Um, I ended up going to two Goodwills this past month, um, starting off with the first one. Oof, sorry. So I ended up getting Warm Bodies, the, um, who's in this one? Uh, Nicholas Holt and Teresa Palmer movie. I know next to nothing about this besides, that I believe, this is a zombie movie? I, I I believe so. I believe so. Uh, yeah, I, I know pretty much nothing besides this is a zombie romance movie. <laughs> and then I got 12 Monkeys, the uh, Terry Gilliam movie. I know this is a pretty trippy movie, so I want to check it out. Uh, the most expensive of all of these, surprisingly, was G.I. Joe Retaliation. Um, this was like four bucks or something like that, but I own the first one. Uh, I actually really enjoy those first two movies, so, yeah, at me. <laughs> I enjoy them. Uh, the Strangers, I actually ended up getting this one, like, brand new in the seal. <clears throat> I, uh, it's been a long time since I've seen The Strangers, and I kind of want to rewatch it, even though it's not a very rewatchable movie, per se. And it's got the unrated cut, too, so, extra spooky. <laughs> Another one that was new in the wrap was The Last Starfighter, uh, older copy of it i believe because this is the 25th anniversary and this came out in 1984 so i think this came out in like um 2009 if i can do the math correctly yeah 2009 so it'd been in the seal for quite a long time then the other one uh the other goodwill that i went to i found the butterfly effect also brand new in the wrapping Pretty neat. Uh, also, I ended up rewatching this or watching this one at the on the first of October. So, yeah, you'll hear my thoughts about that one at the end of the month. Okay. Cry Wolf, a pretty um, interesting horror movie. I gotten hyped up for that one because one of my friends online were telling me that was a really good movie. Um, I didn't love it honestly, but we'll talk about that at the end of the month. And yes, I I do already own Iron Man, but a Blu-ray upgrade. It's it's nice to have. Rounding out my Fast and Furious collection, actually, actually no, I up until Fast X, except for Fast X, this is the only Fast and Furious movie I needed, which is the fourth movie, Fast and fa Fast and Furious. That that's literally just what it's called. Um, and then I got the first season of Rick and Morty. Uh, you know, it's a fun fun show. I think I've only seen like the first 
three or four episodes or something like that of that show. <laughs> uh, the Craft, I I want to watch that one this month. Because, you know, spooky, spooky dooky season. And then I got Arnold Schwarzenegger in Commando. Heard that one was kind of kind of fun. So, set these off to the side. All right. Birthday haul, y'all. All right, so, other than movies, you already saw I got the ghost face stuff. All right, so we got the ghost face mask and the ghost face knife. I actually already had a knife that was pretty similar to the ghost face knife, um, but it doesn't shoot blood. <laughs> That's kind of neat. This is only like six bucks, and I believe this was eight. So uh, not too bad. And actually, this is cheaper to get at Walmart than it was at uh, a Halloween store that I went to. And uh, just just if you're wondering, I did not get anything from that. Halloween store that I just mentioned, um, that Halloween store is nothing like, uh, a Spirit Halloween. And then I got two vinyls. So this one I got as a gift was, uh, Pink Floyd's The Wall. Um, I made the joke when I first got it, it's Donald Trump's favorite album. And then I got the vinyl collection of the Nightmare Before Christmas soundtrack. So I will be listening to that one pretty darn soon. And this one also comes with some pretty neat uh, discs because I believe this was like the Target exclusive. Also, I did go to Target. Yes. Um, their movie section is like non-existent at this point at that Target. So I'm probably never going to go there for movies, but maybe for their vinyl selection because they got a pretty decent vinyl selection, I will say. And then for CDs, yes, I, I bought CDs. Uh, I got Best of David Bowie. Oh, I love Bowie. Bowie's great. And then... <laughs> this one's kind of funny. So I got Flower Boy by Tyler, the Creator. And y'all can read, I believe. Um, yeah, that spine. <laughs> y'all can read that. The Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That is what it says. <laughs> if you read it properly, that is what it says. And then the one video game I got... Pikmin 3 Deluxe for the Nintendo Switch. I already beat this one, um, and I, I loved it. This is one of the most fun games I think I've ever played, and uh, I, I got it last week, already beat it. I'm pretty sure that is, like, my fastest um, completion time for a modern video game. So not including, like, any old arcade games and stuff like that. That is the fastest time I've beaten a, a modern video game, I do believe. Um, so, in terms of movie gifts, uh, I got five. So, we got Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 on 4K, so that's awesome. Uh, the 4K looks really, really good for that one, by the way. Um, Scream 6, I, like I said, I rewatched that one already. <laughs> Fast X, so now I have all the Fast and Furious movies, all 11 of them, including Hobbs and Shaw, so that's pretty neat. Uh, the Elephant Man, the David Lynch movie. I need to check this one out. That one's on Criterion. I didn't buy that one. Like I said, I got it as a gift. Uh, and Let Me In, this is the remake of Let the Right One In. I haven't seen Let the Right One In, but I've seen this. And I actually really do like that one. And then, also, I forgot to mention this one. In terms of non-movie stuff, I did get a book. I went to Barnes and Noble, and I bought *The Last Ronin*, the Ninja Turtles graphic novel. Now, normally, if it wasn't a, a graphic novel that was like based off of like some really like really popular source material, th th which if this isn't, except that I'm a huge Ninja Turtles fan. If I didn't already say that last month. Um, in my wrap-up video, uh, this is basically, I haven't started reading it yet, but basically, I, I know the setup, and it's, the Ninja Turtles get killed, except for one, and along the way, you're trying to figure out which one survived, and this, you know, turtle ends up using, like, all of the weapons of the other three, um, I think... I might have been spoiled for the ending. I'm not quite sure. 
But yeah, the point of this one is to try and figure out which turtle survived getting uh, wiped. I'm not gonna say who, who like who the character that I got spoiled was the the last Ronin, um, because I don't want to spoil it for y'all because I don't even know if that's a spoiler yet. Uh, but yeah, I'm not gonna say who it was. Um, and then in terms of stuff that I bought. So at this point, you've probably already seen my Amazon unboxing video. So this is kind of just a recap of what I got from there. And then the stuff that I bought like in store. So Cobweb, I already, talk, already talked about it. I love this a lot. The Texas Chainsaw Massacre original and the 2003 remake. Uh, this one's on Steelbook. Great. Even better, honestly. <laughs> I do prefer the remake. Sorry. Um, yeah. And then we got Evil Dead Rise, one of my favorite movie horror, movies in general of the year, and, like, second favorite horror movie of the year. Um, yeah. I did not notice this had a digital. That's awesome. Blair Witch Project. I'm going to put this one off to the side so I can uh, redeem the, the code for that one. Equalizer 2. Uh, I own the first one. Wanted to rewatch this one. Actually, I... Didn't get a chance to rewatch this one. Actually, no. I rewatched it before watching three, as I already said. Uh, didn't get a chance to buy this before watching Equalizer three. So yeah, we got Us from Jordan Peele. I, I actually haven't seen this one, but this is on thirty one and thirty one. So I'm gonna be watching that one soon. Joyride the trilogy. So one, two, and three. I've only seen the first one. Um, second and third, I believe, are direct-to-video sequels, and I heard they're not great. The Crazies, the remake from 2011, I believe. Uh, I watched this one in August, and I thoroughly enjoyed it, so I wanted to buy that one. That was, was like seven bucks or something like that, so not too bad. And then Sleepy Hollow, uh, the Tim Burton movie. I want to check that one out this month. And then another movie I want to check out this month is Creep Show. From George A. Romero. And then that was all I ordered off of Amazon. I actually ordered one other thing that was in the unboxing video that I didn't get this this past month. I got it this current month, so I'll, that'll be in the October wrap-up. So I got, in terms of stuff that I, I bought in person, so I got the Flash Steelbook. Uh, it's actually a really nice Steelbook in person. I paid 40 bucks for this, though, so I, mean, I love the movie a lot. And I wanted to buy the Steelbook because this is, like, the only way, besides the really bad um, Walmart exclu exclusive that you can get both the 4K and the Blu-ray. So, yeah. Got Joyride. I was just going to get the DVD because I already had the digital, but, like, it's, this is the same price as the DVD, plus I had the, D the DVD in it, so this is just the Blu-ray. Gave away the digital code already to one of my buddies. Um, then I got Cocaine Bear, which is just a, a really fun little movie. Um, and then I got Air, one of the, you know, biggest surprises, honestly, of the whole year. Um, and just for reference, I got The Flash at Best Buy, and then Joyride, Cocaine Bear, and Air at a Walmart. Then at a Barnes & Noble, I don't know where my October Sky copy is. Um, I believe it's over there, but I did buy October Sky. Driving Miss Daisy, never seen it. Tu Wong Fu, Thanks for Everything from Julie Newmar. Um, I honestly don't know anything besides, I believe it's a drag movie with Wesley Snipes, Patrick Swayze, and John Leguizamo. <laughs> I don't even know. I've heard it's good, though. Tales from the Dark Side. Um, this is from, like, the the writings of Stephen King, and I was like, oh yeah, I'm sold. Uh, and it's got Steve Buscemi in it. I'm sold. Orphan. This is, this is actually a really, really good slasher, believe it or not. Even though it looks kind of generic, it's really good. And then Once Upon a Time in the West, like, I've heard this is one of the best westerns of all time, so I need to check this one out. And that does it, ladies and gentlemen. That does it. That is everything. Actually, no. I forgot, as a gift, I got the Rocky Six movie collection. Now, 
I had owned the Rocky movies before, except for the fifth one, which this is in. So I might keep it just for the fifth one, even though the fifth one's not great. Um, yeah, this is the six movies. So yeah, it's awesome. But yeah, that, that'll do it. Um, that is everything. I'm sorry this video is so long. 70 freaking minutes is a lot. This is before I edited everything, so could be shorter, could be longer. I don't even know. But uh, yeah, that, that'll do it, everybody. So thank you for watching. Please hit the subscribe button if you're new here. Um, if you've made it this far in the video, mad props to you. You guys are awesome. So I thank you guys. Um, we hit 150 subscribers just recently, so let's get to 200 by the end of the year. Thank you guys again for watching. Stay tuned for more.